So hi and welcome to this EMR rounds and uh, this is the patient I saw him some other day. Uh, he is a 22 year old male. Okay, and he presented with complaints of both eye itching for almost six months, so long standing itching. Uh, so the patient had typical dark circles around his eyes, and on examination, there were uh, small papillae noted on the upper tarsal conjunctiva. Nothing like a cobblestone, but just a small micro papillae. And multiple PEEs were seen. Okay, multiple PEEs were seen, and there was a very interesting finding. That is, there was a ring, a white ring, which is uh, which was inside the cornea, and there was a clear zone between the limbus and that white ring. So just to offer. arcus senilis like lesion or arcus senilis like opacity it's what he call as an arcus juvenilis or pseudogerontoxin which is classically seen in vernal keratoconjunctivitis another important feature uh, noted here was the presence of limbitis there was a limbal edema was noted congestion was there muddy conjunctiva was there so it's not just a normal allergic conjunctivitis it is a vkc or vernal keratoconjunctivitis so i refer this patient to cornea and uh, they started him on olapatid and od Taclement ointment and lotiprid eye drops, tedious for one week. So this is going to be our case. So I want to focus the discussion more towards the treatment aspect. See, most of us know what are the features of VKC, but let us talk something about the uh, the treatment of allergic conjunctivitis in general. Okay. So I will quickly show you two important tables, and those two tables matter. So let me just explain from first. Allergic conjunctivitis or ocular allergy. can be manifested as four forms two acute and two chronic the two acute forms are sac or seasonal allergic conjunctivitis perennial allergic conjunctivitis the chronic ones are vernal keratoconjunctivitis and atopic keratoconjunctivitis know that only the chronic form this k is there keratoconjunctivitis okay now the seasonal and the perennial ones are what we commonly see in day to day practice but vkc and akc are more severe forms they are chronic they have these exacerbations now and then very very important table please uh, pause and take a screenshot of this table this table kind of shows you four things the sac pac vkc akc okay these two are acute which means they are type 1 hypersensitivity reaction vkc and akc are type 4 or cell mediated hypersensitivity reaction so type 1 means there is more importance or more relevance towards the release of histamines from mast cells so the allergens are going to enter the conjunctiva there are conjunctival mast cells the mast cells will be degranulated thereby causing release of histamines so the histamine relevance is more in these two not much in vkc and akc where it is more relevant in vkc and akc it is going to be in this chronic cell mediated or t cell mediated inflammation so more of histamine release more of mast cells in these two more of t cell mediated response in vkc and akc okay so more of fibroblasts or tissue remodeling happens in vkc and akc why is this important we will see in a moment because the treatment options are going to vary according to the pathophysiology or the implicating uh, mediators in both these categories of ocular allergy now as far as treatment of ocular allergy goes generally speaking can split into non pharmacological and pharmacological non pharmacological are avoid allergens lubricants you can also include in pharmacological but they are not very specific to uh, or they are not very anti allergic they just lubricants cold compresses lubricants are going to wash away your allergens cold compresses can cause vasoconstriction of conjunctival vessels and they can also increase the action of antihistamines so there is a mechanism of action of advising cold compresses pharmacologically speaking there are two generations first generation second generation we always go for second generation treatment first generation was when we had during our grandpa days uh, nafazolin will be a very common or would have been a very common constituent in those days even today in certain drugs like redif and there are certain drugs where the representatives will promote use of nafazolin so the topical decongestant which can cause vasoconstriction uh, gives an immediate cooling effect for the patients uh, and another very common antihistamine which was used very early was phenyramin phenyramin hmm? it's a first generation antihistamine and another first generation and still being used uh, mast cell stabilizer is going to be chromolin chromolin glycate or chromolin sodium this is going to be the first generation anti uh, allergic drugs coming to the more important the second generation there are almost eight categories are there okay we'll come one by one the first is going to be pure or original antihistamines that is they are going to target the h1 receptor they are h1 receptor antagonist two pure antihistamines are levocabastin e medastin levocabastin e medastin okay second the mast cell stabilizers the pure second generation mast cell stabilizers are nidocromil naga naga is n acetyl aspartyl glutamate loxamide and pemirolast loxamide and pemirolast these are mast cell stabilizers but what we commonly use these days going to be a dual action or combination of h1 receptor with mast cell stabilizers they are olapatidin ketotifen 
epinastin, azelastin, alkaftadin and bepotastin. You may have commonly encountered these two drugs where the representatives will come forward, alkaftadin and bepotastin. Or the newer generation, they say it's more potent than olapatadin. But clinical evidence does not say this is superior, this is inferior. Almost all are going to be the same. So people can either prefer olapatadin or bepotastin or alkaftadin. So three commonly used anti-allergic medications which have dual action of blocking both your H1 receptors as well as stabilizing your mast cells. Then the only NSAID indicated is Ketrolac or Kettler. Okay. Then you have leukotriene receptor antagonist still in studies. Oral antihistamines can be tried. Uh, it is not a very proven one, but studies have shown that you can add uh, add them as an adjuvant therapy. So three commonly used oral antihistamines are desloratadine, rupatadine, and ibastin. Ibastin is commonly used in orbit clinic for allergic edema. Okay. Now coming to the main and the more important ones are topical corticosteroids. Yes, there is a role for topical corticosteroids, but not in your normal allergic conjunctivitis, but in a more severe form so where you want to reduce symptoms as early as possible. But always try to keep it short and try to taper the dose. The three important corticosteroids are FML, fluoromethanolone, lotiprednol, and remexalone. Now, these three are called as soft steroids. They are called as soft steroids. Then, Coming to the treatment which was given for our patient, the calcineurin inhibitors, which are two in number, one is cyclosporin, other is tacrolimus. Now, both these two are going to be immunomodulators or steroid sparing therapy. They're like immunosuppressors, they are steroid sparing agents. So, in patients who are having a very severe allergic conjunctivitis, for example, a vernal character conjunctivitis or an atopic character conjunctivitis, you can't put the patient on a long term steroids. Therefore, to spare them, uh, therefore, to relieve the patient of the steroid-induced side effects, we go for this calcineurin inhibitor, that is cyclosporin and tacrolimus. They are going to inhibit T-cell activation. They are going to uh, you know, impact the T-cell mediated release of uh, the inflammatory mediators uh, on a long-term basis. So, you can confidently start this patient for chronic use. They are far better and more safer than chronic use of steroids. And not just that, they can also release the histamine release from the mast cells. Note that cyclosporin will induce a burning sensation. Therefore, people prefer tacrolimus, which is, was the exact treatment given for our patient. This tacrolimus ointment was given. So that is going to be the complete list of the second generation antihistamines. You may want to make a note of these things. Now, going to the, uh, the final table, which I was insisting. See, as far as your uh, treatment goes, you have non-pharmacological treatment, which you can do it for all these two. They are useful in both. So what are non-pharmacological? The cold compressions, lubricants, and avoidance of allergen. As far as antihistamines is concerned, that is consisting of both your dual action things, there is indication for both SAC, PAC complex as well as VKC, AKC complex. The first choice of treatment for both these conditions is going to be your combination therapies, so the dual action therapies, maybe rolapatidin or betoact or uh, I mean the bepotastin or the alkaftin. These are going to be the first choice of treatment, right? Now, as far as topical corticosteroids are concerned, there is no role for your seasonal or perennial allergic conjunctivitis. Avoid steroids, they are rarely needed. But as far as VKC, AKC goes, you can give pulsed therapy in reactivations or the exacerbations. You can start them on topical corticosteroids. You can top, uh, start them on the soft steroids and have a close watch on the patients. Now, as far as immunomodulators are concerned, we already saw that this cyclosporin tacrolimus are indicated only for VKC, AKC long term because you know that VKC, AKC has this T cell mediated response. They have a very chronic, uh, you know, relapsing and remitting episodes. Therefore, this makes sense to use steroid sparing immunomodulator therapy. But there is no role for these two in your normal seasonal or perennial allergic conjunctivitis. Again, oral medications can be adjuvants. So you can use them if you want, but they have other comorbidities, especially they can cause dry eye disease. So these are going to be some of the basic concepts to understand. So the message is going to be the treatment of choice. So the first treatment of choice in both your allergic conjunctivitis groups are going to be antihistamines and master cell stabilizers in combination. Okay, when it comes to vernal keratoconjunctivitis or atopic keratoconjunctivitis, uh, it is better to add a long-term steroid sparing uh, immunomodulatory therapy, namely tacrolimus and cyclosporin, where tacrolimus is preferred. So that ends with our discussion. Thank you. Bye-bye.